Welcome back guys to another data mine video. What's that? You didn't think there was gonna be a data mine today? Yeah, there's no new event. We still have another week of the most recent UR event for the HMS, but we are getting an update that has a lot of new stuff. And that is mostly in the form of augmented modules. These were brought up in the fourth Chinese anniversary stream, and I didn't misspeak there. It was truly the fourth. And then they literally didn't talk about them again into the fifth Chinese anniversary stream. And they're now being implemented into the game. So that's what most of this video is going to be about. Although we are getting one more new ship. This was supposed to be a ship that came out last week, but it got delayed. And so Repulse Meta is coming with this update. Now I could talk about all of her stats and skills and how she's a little bit more tanky than I expected and her barrages aren't half bad. Or because there's approximately one of you who even cares about this ship, I could just say that she's eating up one of your dock space and get into the content that most of you actually care about. So what are augment modules? And since I assume that most of you watching this video don't hang around in data mines and talk to Chinese beta testers all the time, I'm gonna start from the very beginning and the basics of what they are. They are effectively a third auxiliary slot that every ship from now on will be able to equip. This is an additional special slot that you will obtain once you max limit break the ship. So it won't be there right away. You have to max limit break that ship unless that ship is a UR, a meta ship, or a PR system ship. Those get them right off the bat. These apply to every ship, not just the frontline ships. And we will get to more on this when we get into the specific modules that we have. But that slashing ability that they showcased on stream will only be for the frontline ships, but every ship will have the opportunity to have a module that has a skill, and those skills are good and all of them have stats. Now today on the base release, there are going to be 12 basic augment modules. These can come in the rare form or they can come in the elite form. You get these to drop in a sort of gotcha-like manner. You can enhance them and when they get to max enhance, you can actually limit break them so that you change that rare module into an elite module. However, you can't do that from an elite module to an SR module at this time. We actually get five SR modules today as well. Now, SR modules are locked to a specific ship so far. I'm not sure if this will be the way forever, but as of right now, every SR augment module is locked to a specific ship. These modules not only have enhancements of the stats, but they also upgrade a skill of that specific ship. We'll get into like which ships these are and what upgrades they're gonna have, but you get literally like upgraded skills. It's almost like an additional retrofit, so to speak. So there are some ships that are gonna be moving up in their usability with these new augment modules that they get specifically for them. I assume there will be a lot of these released in the future and that a lot of different ships will get access to them. They picked some weird ones for their first set of five. All right, before I move on into all of the different types of augment modules that are available, let's talk about the basics in terms of, you know, vocabulary. So we're all on the same page of what we're talking about. Keep in mind, all of these names are translated roughly from the Chinese source code. So it might be a little bit different than what the localization team at Yostar decides to put on the global server for their name. So we're gonna specifically talk about four new items. The augment module is the equipment itself. It refers to any of those basically equipments that you can put in the new slot. And so that was what we'll be referring to as modules. The module core is a crafting material that you can get through various methods that we'll go over later in this video, but you use these to craft the augment module. So you make them with this material, kind of like the materials you get from the gear lab to make your actual equipment. These module cores are also used to limit break the augment modules. So if you wanna go up from a rare to an elite. Then there are augment enhancing stones. These are what is used to enhance the augment modules. Enhancing is working just like regular equipments where you, you know, you have plus one, plus two, plus three. This goes up to plus 10 currently for the augment modules. 
Now I know for regular equipment, it used to go up to plus 10 and now it's up to plus 13. Here it's up to plus 10 and we'll see if that ends up getting level capped increased. But you use these enhancement stones to level up your augment modules, which comes with basically just stat boosts. And once you get to a certain amount of level ups, I believe plus 10, you actually get skills. So all of these augment modules are going to get a skill attached with them that unlocks once you get them to a certain enhancement level. And finally, probably the most confusing item and part is the restructuring core. So this is what is used to quote, re-roll your stats on your items. So when you make your item, you have a specific uh, amount of stats that's within that type of augment module. That module, it's RNG, how many stats you got. Now the type of module will dictate the type of stats that you get and also the range, but you're going to get a certain amount of base stats and then you're going to get what I'd call RNG ability to have higher stats than the base. And what you can do is you can actually use these restructuring cores to re-roll those numbers. This kind of works like the Meowficers or the Cats where you have a certain amount of skills and then you pay gold to re-roll those skills. From my understanding though is it is a cumulative level. So you can get bad stat rolls but they're going to continue to add on each other. So let's say that you need five extra stats and you roll and it gives you one extra stat and you roll and gives you an extra stat and it will eventually add up to the five extra stats but the amount of rolls you have to use to get to that max level of stats for your module is going to differ. So the cost differs but at the end of the day you can still get to that max level which is going to be a little bit different than straight re-rolling like they did with cats which literally takes like years to get like perfect cats so that's good because when i heard about the re-rolling the first time i was a little bit nervous on how much of a coin sink this is going to be. Now, all of that is kind of decent for basics, but you need to know how to get these augmented module cores, the enhancement stones, and the restructuring cores, as well as this is all gonna cost coins too to do that. So we'll get into the costs as well as how to obtain these items. So all of the items, the module cores, the enhancement stones, and the restructuring cores can be obtained during a weekly raid. This is a new thing that's gonna be added. Belfast is the lead here, and you can get any of the items from doing your dailies here. This is obviously going to be capped, so it's kind of a slow way to accumulate them. You're also going to have events. You can get all of them from events, and we are getting special events with the release here that's going to give us, you know, started kind of like when they had the cognitive arrays, and then they, you know, gave us all those cognitive arrays right off the bat from the events, and then we kind of, you know, they dried up a little bit. But right at the beginning, they're going to give us a lot of free ones just to kind of get us started in this new mechanic. Cruise missions are also going to give you module cores and enhancement stones but not restructuring cores, just to be clear. You might have already seen these because we actually started the most recent cruise season last week. So if you've actually leveled through your cruise missions, you might have actually gotten some of these augmented module materials already because even though the augmented modules themselves haven't been in the game, the materials have been because they needed to add them when they changed over the cruise missions. Also, the Arbiter. So in Operation Siren, the Arbiter is in that middle zone with the big red circle, and the Arbiter battle is going to now give rewards in module cores. So these are going to be how you, you know, craft more modules. So from it, what it's looking like is it looks like module cores are going to be easier to come by than, say, restructuring cores, which look like they're gonna probably be the most difficult to come by. Enhancement stones also look decent. Map drops are also potentially going to have enhancement stones added to them, not module cores and not restructuring cores, just enhancement stones. And so we'll have to see what uh, maps exactly are going to have those, but stay tuned that they might add these to map drops. So let's look at the costs at building the modules and you know how much is it going to cost you specifically in coins on top of these new items to make these uh, new augment modules. 
So remember that there are two types of augmented modules. There are the general ones, the ones that are, you know, rare and elite and they can be put on anybody. And then there are the unique modules, which can only apply to their specific ship. The costs are a little bit different based on which one you're doing. So we'll start with the general equipment. It's going to cost you 700 coins, so very low cost and two cores to, you know, pull and make a general augment module. Then if you're going to limit break it, so if you want to like upgrade it to the next level, then it's going to cost you 2,800 coins and another two cores. So honestly, not that expensive, but it can be a coin sink if you are going to have to make many of these over and over again. We obviously are going to have to make um, basically the specific one that you want for each ship is going to want one. So you might have to try over and over again for each of your ships. And some of them are not as good as others. So, uh, and obviously some of them are going to have their RNG stats. So it might not seem like a lot, but this could be a big coin sink uh, if you're continuing to have to craft them. Now the unique equipment, these are usually like the best options for their uh, specific ships. And I imagine that will continue to be the case throughout, you know, the release of the SR unique augment modules. And these are going to cost you 10,000 gold and 15 cores. So not very cheap. Uh, so for the same, like literally it's going to be like seven and a half in terms of the costs of cores. And that's going to be even more than that in terms of the cost of gold. So it, it actually is going to cost you a little bit to make the unique equipment. So let's start off by looking at the general augmented modules here and what their stats do and stuff. I'm going to break it down by the hull restrictions. So each one is restricted to a specific type of ship, at least for the generic ones. And so we're going to keep them together. Like, so for example, we'll start with destroyers. Destroyers have two options that they can equip. And that is going to be the dual sword or the hammer. The dual sword is going to give 20 firepower and 12 evasion as its base. And then with the re-rolling with the RNG, you can actually get an additional five firepower and additional additional three evasion. So with enough time and enough of those restructuring stones, you can actually have up to 25 firepower and 15 evasion. Now, a reminder that this is the elite version of the dual sword. There is a rare version that is worse. We're going with literally the maxed enhanced and highest rarity of the augment module possible here for the stats. There's also a slash area type, and these slashes are going to be kind of a big important part of these augment modules. These are why we first called them melee weapons when they first were debuted on stream because that's what they look like. There are different types of slashes and they you know have different patterns and stuff but generally what they're going to be doing is they're going to cut down bullets and so you're going to want these slashes to basically just get rid of the bullet hell. Now something to keep in mind with slashes is they only trigger at certain times times. First of all, they have a 15 second cooldown. So, you know, they will not trigger within 15 seconds of each other. However, that does only apply to the specific ship. So if you have two ships with slash effects, their cooldowns are going to be independent of each other. Now, it's kind of important to note that the slashes are going to come from the lead ship no matter what, and they will change based on how much slash based modules that you are equipping to your different Vanguard ships. Only Vanguard ships are going to get these slash type of effects and they have kind of different animations for those slashes based on the different weapon types that you are equipping which different modules but generally each of them has their own 15 second cooldown now if that cooldown has been you know they, they've had the charge of the 15 seconds and they get taken damage then they will you know release that slash attack or if they haven't been damaged for five seconds since it's been 15 seconds so that's like 20 seconds 15 seconds for the recharge and then five seconds of being idle they'll just release it like that just they because apparently it won't hold it forever. They're just going to release it. And maybe that's because it can create some, I don't know, effects. But generally, it's going to be 
when it takes damage, you're going to release this slash, but it, if it's not taking damage, it's not going to store it for more than five seconds and then it will release it. That's just something to keep in mind with these slashes, these melee weapon type animations. It's kind of weird adding that to a, you know, gun boat game, but you know, I'll try it out after the update. So anyway, back to the dual sword is it's going to have this slash. Now your other option for destroyers is the hammer, which is going to give you 30 base torpedoes with an option of an additional five stat from the RNG component. And it's going to give you seven accuracy with the option of three more. So 35 torpedo and 10 accuracy. It's going to have a different type of slash. It's going to be a radiating type instead of an area type, but it's going to still be a slash. So really you have the option here of going for a firepower destroyer or a torpedo destroyer. Your choice is really simple based on which type of destroyer you are using. So this one's not too difficult, but we'll move on to the light cruisers. The light cruisers have two options largely. The sword and the crossbow. The crossbow can also be used for your repair ship, so like Akashi can use it, but there are two options here. So the sword is going to give you 20 accuracy with an option to go up to 25 from RNG and 9 reload with the option to go up to 12. It's going to have a slash radiating type. This is going to be the exact same slash that you get from the hammer in the destroyer. So this is going to be, you know, probably what you're going to want for most of your light cruisers. It's going to give you reload and accuracy to decent stats. They're obviously not damage dealing specific stats, but you know, hit stat helps you crit and reload obviously gets you more of those options to crit. And the slash is going to decrease damage that you're taking from shells. So this is a nice equipment that you can put on your light cruisers. Now the manju now the hand crossbow, and there's also a crossbow low later. So keep that separated, the hand crossbow versus the crossbow. But the, the hand crossbow is really an anti-air module. It can give you 15 firepower plus an additional ability to go up to 20 with RNG. And then it gives you 21 anti-air with the ability to go up to 24. So this is really going to be used for your anti-air cover. And this you can see in the skill, Vanguard's receive 5% less aviation damage. This is for all of your Vanguard, which is very good. And it does not stack. So if you have a crossbow on one of your uh, ships, there's no point in really putting a second one. I mean, I guess you would be able to get the firepower stat and the anti-air stat, but generally how I look at this is you're probably gonna want swords uh, most of the time and maybe like one crossbow if you're going into a map that needs anti-air or against opponents that are really focused on dealing aviation damage. But the crossbow is actually pretty good. You'd probably wanna have one of them laying around, but you don't probably need that many. Now we're moving on to the uh, like the heavy cruisers, the large cruisers. Um, I believe these also work for battle monitors and... Um, the munition ships, like the big slow guys on the battlefield, at least in the vanguards. So we have the great sword and the lance. So the great sword is going to give you 20 firepower with the option to go to 25 from RNG and 15 torpedo with the option to go to 18. It's going to have a slash as well, an area type version. So this is going to be similar to the dual sword. So, so far, the only uh, module that has a effect that's not a slash is the crossbow. The lance is going to be another module that's going to have a skill that's not a slash. First off though, stats wise, it's going to give you 19 hit with the option to go up to 24 with RNG and 18 anti-air with the option to go to 20. One. Now, this one is also going to give a skill that when the equipped ship's HP is below 50%, you're going to get 20 firepower stat for 20 seconds and it can only proc once per battle. Greatsword is going to give you the 20 firepower at all times, basically the base minimum that you're going to get at a plus 10 enhanced module is 20. This one's going to give it to you through the skill once you uh, drop below 50% and only for 20 seconds. I really don't like this one as much. I almost always rather have the great sword but let me know in the comments if if you think otherwise if you see something that the lance uh would be much better for over the great sword but right now i think the great sword is probably the way to go for these uh heavy cruisers all right let's move on to the back line we're going to start with battle cruisers and battleships as well as the aviation battleships they can equip either the officer sword or the crossbow so a little bit different than the hand crossbow and the normal sword 
sword. Just keep that in mind. So for the officer's sword, it's going to have 15 hit stat or accuracy with the option to go up to 20. And then it's going to have 17 evasion with the option to also go up to 20. So 20 hit, 20 evasion. That's, you know, that's a very good set. It's, it's actually more defensive than I would have thought for a sword but i guess in terms of skills though it's where we kind of go offensive after the first main gun fire all main fleet ships gain 20 firepower for 10 seconds that does not stack this is a very interesting skill because once you fire the first time you get you got 10 seconds to basically buff all of the firepower of the back line so it obviously encourages you to be kind of you know mono type because you want to you know, give them all firepower and it's all going to be within 10 seconds. So you need to make sure that your timing is good there, but it's generally, it looks pretty good. I mean, the first main gun fire and you get this buff that that's going to be probably the most important one of all of your salvos. So that's a very good skill. The only thing is obviously you, it doesn't stack. So, you know, you can't just use all of your ships and get that skill. I mean, the base stats are also pretty good, but they're all defensive. Now, for the crossbow, is going to be also very interesting. I think the ones that they did for battleships were, were interesting. So there's 20 firepower base with the option to go to 25. That's obviously very good for battleships. And it's going to have 17 anti-air with the option to go to 20. You know, whatever. We'll take the extra anti-air for free. We're, we're here for the firepower. But for the skill is where it gets interesting. Weapons on the first slot deal 5% extra extra damage to heavy armor and negative 5% uh, damage to light armor. So this is basically a must equip uh, against any heavy armor enemies. And this gets kind of interesting because if you're actually fighting against light armor, you're not going to want the crossbow at all. It's it, the 5% damage is not going to be made up by the 25 firepower, really. So then you might just go for the officer's sword just for like, I mean, I guess you get the hit stat. So that's extra chance to crit. But yeah, it's kind of an interesting one. This one's obviously going to be used for heavy armor. And then I I really like the the officer sword. I would probably equip one of them to every set of battleships that I, I have. And then the Maju crossbow will be equipped to the other ones when I'm fighting heavy armor. That's probably what I would do right off the bat between uh, these two options. So moving on, we're going to go to carriers and light carriers. Uh, we have the hunt bow, which gives you 25 aviation base and then the option to go up to 30 uh, if you have good RNG. And then for anti-air, similar to the crossbow. 17 anti-air goes up to 20 anti-air with good RNG. Now for its skill, it's going to be plus 20 evasion when a self plane shoots down five enemy planes and that lasts for the rest of the battle. So once you shoot down those five planes, you get an extra 20 aviation. Now this is interesting because shooting down five planes, depending on the map can actually be kind of hard. You know, they might be too hard to shoot down in the first place, or there just might not be enough planes for you to shoot that down. Uh, 20 aviation is okay, I guess, but let's go look at the, the scepter. Now, this has 25 aviation and goes up to 30, just like the hunt bow, but instead of anti-air, it gets... 17 evasion going up to 20 evasion so i would really like this scepter pretty much flat out better by stats because evasion is better than anti-air almost always and then at the first airstrike all main ships gain 20 aviation for 10 seconds does not stack so basically the same skill as the officer sword but only for aviation for the air first airstrike the scepter is just I think just a straight better than the bow pretty much in almost uh, every situation. I guess I guess you could use the bow on your alternatives because the scepter is not going to stack, but I'd still rather have the evasion. But the, yeah, I, I would probably stay away from the bow here. So we'll move on to the last two, and these are probably the, the two that you guys care the least about. Uh, and these are the ones for submarines and aviation submarines. So first we have the dagger. This is going to give you 10 accuracy with the option to go up to 15 extra uh, you know, hit stat. And then it's going to give you 15 evasion going up to 18 evasion. Not so important for things that are already invisible. But uh, what we care about is this skill, which is torpedo weapon crit rate plus 10%. This is uh, just a straight 
crit rate boost. So it goes on top of all of that accuracy hit stat calculations and stuff. This just goes on top and tacks on. So that's really, really nice. The Kunai gives you 35 torpedo going up to 40 with the option of, uh, you know, five hit stat going up to eight. So stat wise, you know, I like this a lot better for DPS, but skill wise, uh, it says when a torpedo hits 8% chance for the hit enemy to do negative 5% damage for 10 seconds, that doesn't stack. So you have a chance that when you hit somebody with the kunai, that basically they're going to do less damage. This is a low chance that it happens. It does a low damage reduction and it doesn't stack and it only applies for a short period of time. So this skill is uh, certainly a lot less meaningful than the dagger, which just gives you crit rate. So I'd probably lean toward the dagger here. Although, you know, the the stats are kind of nicer for the kunai, but I, I probably want to take that crit rate, especially since, you know, subs are usually used on bosses where they're very difficult and you want to spend the extra oil to make sure you get the kills. So anyway, those are all the basic equipment. They, they really do feel pretty basic, but they're going to give you, you know, some good stat boosts. They're going to give you slashes. So that's going to help your effective HP because you can, you know, basically dodge more bullets yeah so these are specifically those dodge bullets when you're in auto which is like part of the problem like all those fast ships they can't really dodge very well because the ai is terrible but now with these you can kind of just slash your way out of it so those were all like i said the basic ones pretty basic i think there's a few clear winners there's not too many per hole type they were really just getting the the bare minimum but let's move on to the the specific ones the srs the the really good ones this one's kind of interesting because like i said they're only they're locked specifically to the one specific type of ship now they're unique to that so i think that's kind of creative and they're actually very good so let's go with laffy uh, so we'll start off with Laffy. She's um, going to to be the first uh, starter ship to get one. It's going to have 22 firepower stat with the ability to go up to 32. So that's a significant upgrade from, say, the uh, the dual sword that you would give her instead. And then it's going to give her uh, 13 hit stat going up to 18. So more DPS there. I was, I was hoping it was going to give her a reload, actually, honestly, based on her stuff. But hit stat's fine, too. Hit stat's actually probably better. It's just not within her, like, type. Okay. And then it's also going to have a slash radiating type. So this is actually a slash similar to the hammer rather than to the dual sword, but that's going to be its uh, augment effect. And then it's going to also upgrade War God of Solomon. So that's the one when it fires main guns, you get, you know, chance to increase your stats, but it's going to add at the start of the battle she heals herself 10 hp and reduces her own speed by five for eight seconds at the end of this effect it goes back to normal and then she gets plus 12 percent firepower and torpedo until the end of the battle so she gets a huge heal here and then yeah she's a little bit slower so you know depending on the situation that probably is a bad thing i mean it could be good but most likely a bad thing and then she just gets a straight additional stat boost so we've upgraded our our war god of solomon i'm kind of interested to see how aesthetically it's going to show this upgrade but effectively it's a 10 percent heal so she gets a really good skill boost here it's like a retrofit almost and there's no real reason not to use this on Laffy. It's just whether or not you want to make the investment into making this specific one. Because remember, it's a lot more expensive to do these SR ones and to craft them than it would be to do the normal general ones. We're probably going to get additional ones in the future. And some of these materials might be rare once we get past the initial like events that give us a bunch of the free stuff. All right, moving on. We have Best Meidu Belfast. Uh, they're kind of really going with a lot of the, the old fan favorites because these are effectively like retrofits these uh, new augment modules so let's start with uh, the belfast here she has the 22 firepower stat with the ability to go 32 just like laffy and then she has reload so 15 reload base with the ability to go up to 20 she's also going to have a slash ability literally identical slash ability to laffy so she can block those shells too it's fine and then she's going to upgrade the burn order for belfast so belfast obviously 
has more damage that she deals when she's firing HE ammo, and she has an increased chance of igniting enemies. But now, once they are burning, she's going to have the ability to deal an extra 16% more damage to that burning enemy. This is a massive amount of DPS increase. It's actually kind of should be consistent. She's going to be, she should have HE on, so it should be fairly easy for her to ignite enemies and then just be able to tack on this extra damage. And 16% extra extra damages is no joke there. Additionally, her self evasion is going to go up by 16%. This is evasion stat when an enemy is burning. So I read this is when any enemy on the screen is burning, she's going to get this evasion stat rather than if she's being attacked, the specific bullets are going to in their like hit chance are going to calculate with the extra evasion if the enemy that fired them is burning. The other way is obviously better, and that's how I read it, but it, that obviously could be a wrong interpretation there. But either way, this upgrade to her burn order skill is going to increase that DPS a lot. Um, this is a very good item for Belfast. Continuing with the trend of old uh, ships that probably need some help, Prince Eugen is going to be the next one with a specific unique augment module. So that's really nice. She didn't get a retrofit. She didn't get a meta, uh, but she does kind of get uh, this mini retrofit in the form of an augment module. So she's going to get 20 evasion with the ability to go up to 30. That's really good for a tank like herself. And then she's going to get 20 firepower with the ability to go up to 25 extra. So stat wise, that's very good in line with, you know, being an SR augment module rather than the elites we were looking at earlier. Uh, in terms of her skill for these ones that she does not actually get a slash, she's going to get armor shattering artillery. Weapons on the first shot have eight percent chance to armor break the enemy on hit so armor breaks pretty good i assume this only applies to heavy armor because it it, uh, it looks like it's a traditional armor break not necessarily one of those like special broken ones that like new jersey has or something um but that's still like okay if you're dealing with heavy armor if it triggers right also we're going to be upgrading her unbreakable shield obviously she's a shield tank or she lives and dies by that shield that she needs some help with this shield because there are so many better shield tanks here and that this needs to be upgraded so now the shield is going to absorb 12 shots so that's just more so that's better uh when the shield is proc she's going to get 20 percent more firepower for 10 seconds that's actually very good. She deals damage with firepower, so now she's going to get the extra 25 firepower plus the 20% bonus. Plus, and this is probably the most important part because her biggest weakness was the fact that her shield didn't proc until 20 seconds into the battle when it was basically too late to do much. And it was not even guaranteed, it was 70% chance. But now she's going to proc right at the start of the battle, guaranteed, if she's the lead ship. And that's important. She's probably always going to be the lead ship. She's the tank. But the fact that it's proc guaranteed and it procs the the beginning of the battle when it matters is is great it's obviously enhanced she obviously can get that firepower boost for 10 seconds right at the start so this actually is a really big upgrade to her shield skill good for prince wagon's fans it makes her significantly better and it, if you want to use prince wagon this is this is basically a must i right, move it on we have a, a ship that i is not maybe is popular although my fans are really a fan of this ship i see a lot of comments espousing their fandom to air Arizona. Tears no more. I wonder what that's in reference to. Uh, so she's going to get 25 firepower and she's going to, with the potential, go up to 35. And then she gets 10 reload with the potential, go up to 15. So that's really good stats for a, you know, battleship battle cruiser. Those, those are pretty good. In terms of her skill, she's going to get accelerated reload. So her main gun reload time is going to go down by 10%. So that's good, especially since uh, her whole skill was about healing when she fires her, her main gun. So that's good. And then she deals 15% less damage. Why? Like she's already not dealing that much damage. Like, people weren't using her like they tried to balance this one by giving her 15 percent less damage she definitely did not need that but um apparently okay that's fine so she's gonna fire barely any earlier 10 percent earlier and she's gonna deal like significantly less damage than her already pitiful damage oh 
Great. Okay, so this is this is one nerd's. Well, we'll see what it does to this skill. So her her first skill, she had a fifty percent chance to heal the Vanguard fleet, and now once per battle, when a friendly ship's HP drops below twenty percent, uh, she heals it fifteen percent of their max HP. So that's you know going to be less than if it was her max HP probably because uh, we're probably healing vanguards it's below 20% that's actually very low you shouldn't really be getting there too often but it is a guaranteed heal for the most part you don't have to like worry about that 50% heal thing so honestly the skill upgrade is great the accelerated reload is almost the skill I don't want like the the 10% reload time is not worth it for the minus damage in, in my mind and almost like not want that skill on uh this equipment so arizona probably is the the so far the the weakest of the sr unique modules but we got one more i-58 and if you had to look up this ship too because you don't remember which one of these numbers it was uh you'd be just like me uh, but this is actually the one that you get right off the bat so almost everyone should have this once they basically get through the tutorial um so i'm very interested that this is the sub they picked but it's probably because like a bunch of beginners probably have this sub so anyway it gives 22 torpedo stats going up to 32 potential seven reload going up to 12 potential uh, those are pretty good and then for for the skill it's literally just plus 20 oxygen like yay we get to stay under the water for a little bit longer that's a really boring skill i mean it literally just could have been a stat but it now it's just a, it's a skill okay they got lazy i mean no one's gonna be using i-58 anyway probably so yeah anyway so for skill wise uh it gets enhanced so when she reaches her firing position ijn submarines torpedo and hit stat go up by 10 percent, and it increases their damage dealt to heavy cruisers and large cruisers by 15%. Uh, so we get a little bit of extra damage that she can do. This one is a... Uh, I, I would not invest my limited new resources into this one definitely not anyway that is all of them i believe that's 17 new equipments and um, i'm sure you guys have a lot of questions so if you have any questions leave them in the comments i or somebody else will hopefully answer you i'm usually pretty good about that and anyway i hope this data mine actually really helps you guys because i had a feeling like when i get out of maintenance that this is going to be kind of daunting so thank you to everybody who has helped explain and help translate and help uh, mine all this information so that we can get you guys off on the right foot once that maintenance ends and you don't waste your valuable materials here but this mechanic is interesting i'm curious what you guys think about this mechanic i don't know how i feel about it yet like i know i've been researching it for the last six hours but I still don't know how I feel about it yet, but it doesn't matter because it's been confirmed to work in PvP and so I have to care by default. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to be notified when data mines like this come out, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.